Maybe for the introduction, I, I should ask, uh, because crowdfunding was also already mentioned in the, in the last panel, how many of you have uh, either taken part of the crowdfunding campaign or made a campaign for your own production of film or company? Okay, maybe one third. Good. But basically, the story of crowdfunding, for the intro, I show you one uh, small world map which is made by the Oxford Internet Institute, which shows the, the current distribution of the internet population in the world. So it's scaled, all the countries are scaled uh, based on the, how many internet users are in them. So, uh, and which also shows why uh, most, most of the crowdfunding, or interesting things in crowdfunding, have been happening only recently. Because uh, if you had looked at this map uh, for, let's say, 10 years ago, uh, it would have looked uh, very, A, very US-centric, and uh, it, it would have contained about uh, uh, 10 times less people in the internet. So, what has happened from the crowdfunding? Many people know Kickstarter, which is the, the, like a synonym for crowdfunding in the US and in the English language world. But actually, uh, Kickstarter, starting in 2009, uh, kicked off uh, a bunch of other crowdfunding platforms around the world. And this is, shows the distribution and the types or of crowdfunding platforms in the world, which is still mostly US and Europe, but it's already raising in Asia and in South America. So uh, what we did is we launched one Estonian crowdfunding platform in 2012, which was kind of Kickstarter for the Estonian creative projects, be it music, film, animation, uh, uh, education. And uh, it uh, really started spreading outside of uh, Estonia. So our user base is now in 180 countries and we have uh, about uh, 1 million people have visited it and uh, about uh, 40,000 people have contributed to the projects there. And uh, so here is an example of some of the projects in different colors and different types of projects. This is about half a year's worth of projects uh, in the screen. And the circle sizes show the amount of money raised for the projects. And this is the first uh, kind of film, uh, Estonian film, uh, funded in this way. They got uh, about 17,000 euros uh, from 477 people. And uh, the interesting thing about it is that, first of all, uh, it was a very low budget movie, as you can, as you can see, but uh, they made it into the, it was produced this year, and they made it into the uh, Japanese Tokyo Film Festival program. So, this is one of the UK platforms which is focusing on, on equity crowdfunding, meaning that uh, all the people who put money in it uh, will be shareholders in the organizations or companies who are there. And they're also funding different creative industries. And uh, because we saw there's a need for the companies in Estonia also to have this kind of funding, we set up FundWise this year, which is basically equity crowdfunding. And uh, all of the projects there are companies who will uh, give out shares Based on the based on the amount of money they raise, and uh, so far in t in the first two months we have funded uh, three projects and uh, and are close to funding fourth. If you are interested in it, you can see it downstairs. They have um, uh, one, hang on one second. They are the Urbic bicycles. They are doing the electric bikes uh, for the basically, uh, which looks like regular bikes. But uh, on the creative industries, there was, for example, Rogue Ambassador, who just, uh, just got funded as a one game maker, and they gave out a uh, couple of percent of share of the company for the, for the money raised. But uh, coming back for the overall industry, this is the three circles, uh, 2012, 13, and 14 in, in Europe, Europe uh, crowdfunding scene. So this, is, uh, this shows the kind of approximate growth and in the, the final circle, which is 14, is about 3 billion euros, uh, which uh, is uh, in the financing circles of a small amount of money. But if you look at it, it's coming from zero in, uh, in 2009. It's a quite sizable number. And it's growing quite fast. Mm, and there's, uh, one, one more thing about our platform is that uh, we have integrated, with the first crowdfunding platform was integrating the Estonian EU residents in, into it meaning that the investment can be done around the world uh, for everybody who has the Estonian identity or the authentication card. 
and uh, there's currently about uh, 6,400 people who have done it and who have opened, uh, some of them have opened companies here yeah, or invested in companies here. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, basically it's the e-residency is a kind of platform and we are like one application on it, but it's all also state-provided applications and other, other financial and business applications on it. Okay, this is too much detail. And then maybe, uh, maybe I should open the floor for the questions uh, related to it. So I think uh, it's enough uh, for my monologue. So who is interested, may they ask. Uh, no, basically, like legally, this, this legal is not. Basis in Estonia. Uh, this is not the question of the crowdfunding platform. The taxes is uh, like question of what the business has done has to do afterwards. But uh, but uh, I think the only country in Europe who does like tax reduction based on these kind of investments is UK, who has a very good scheme for. That's the reason also why crowdfunding has taken off in UK the most or equity crowdfunding, and uh, they have the, the platform Crowdcube, which I s showed here, has raised about hundred and. Uh, 10 million uh, bounds so far uh, into the companies on them. And some of them are of, uh, also film and creative production companies. So, so companies don't pay taxes from the fundraised money? No, basically they pay taxes um, depending on the local, uh, local law. So I, I can't say about all the well, 28 European member countries, but uh, I can say that the UK is the investment, uh, they got back some money from the investment, so it, it reduces the investor's risk basically. So they can have a kind of tax deductible the investment they put into the company. Okay, there's another one. Uh, thank you. My question is about uh, the kind of investment into uh, Fundwise. Are you planning to uh, bring down the limit? Because right now it's around 100 to 200, 300 euros. I know some of the- Per, per investor, I mean. Per investor, yeah. But some of the platforms, for example, I've used myself Cedars. Uh, mm. You can invest into it with very small amounts, like 10, 10 euros, 20 euros. Yeah, actually they use the a little bit of a different system, but... Uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 actually the reason why it is so is uh, because of Estonian law. Uh, and uh, no, I don't go into too much detail here, but basically because they are really giving out company shares, so you get direct equity into the companies. Uh, this is the smallest denomination of shares they can give it's usually the lowest number, so they can't go lower because uh, they are the shares of the Estonian company called uh, type called OU, which uh, well, there's a reason why you can't divide it smaller. But uh, basically, it's uh, if it's it's up to the company to say what's the lowest uh, amount is. And in the in the rewards crowdfunding, we usually have the minimum like five or ten euros. But in the in the equity, there's there's a legal reason why the minimum is bigger. Okay, any, any further questions? But I think uh, coming to the, the last panel, we're looking at the, at the end of the last panel, I think the, the equity crowdfunding and the regular rewards crowdfunding will be a big contributor in films and they will probably co-founding. Uh, even in our case with the local rewards platform, we have seen that the Estonian Endowment for the Arts has uh, co-founded or co-funded some of the projects. So the first raise crowdfunding and then the state fund adds money to it or some other investment funds add money to it. So there's probably will be more and more of this cooperation between crowdfunding and the kind of regular big funds putting money into it. And for example, I was just came back from Copenhagen and was in a panel together with uh, European uh, Business Agents Network, uh, one of the founders, and he said that he doesn't invest in any of the company who hasn't done crowdfunding first. So if somebody comes to him and says, go and crowdfund your thing first and then come back to me. So he funds only on top of the already done crowdfunding. And I think this happens more and more. Uh, the, basically, and the question was, what, what's the reasoning behind that? The reasoning is that uh, uh, he sees as this a good validation method of what the public wants or what the bigger crowd wants. So this is one validation method. Hi, Mike. Uh, you may have covered this, I apologise if, if you have, but um, what would be your um, proposition against you know, the big players like Indiegogo, 
Kickstarter, etc. You mean uh, with our our platform? Yeah, I mean, why would you, what do you have enough liquidity in the marketplace uh, to convince me if I was a founder to go with your platform as opposed to a bigger one? Uh, no, I think uh, in your case you probably would go to the GrowthCube anyway, but uh, because uh, depending on I your own pace, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but, so why 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 bother? Why, why not go with I know mm, Cedars or something? They've got yeah, a, they've got a big platform. True, true enough. But if we are currently targeting mostly the area around the Baltic Sea, which is basically the Baltoscandia, and Scandinavia and the Baltic countries, which uh, have a lack of uh, these opportunities. So this that not that interesting in the UK, for example, which is already crowded with uh, different options. Yeah, but the investors on those platforms tend to be quite big. Mm. No. No, it's kind of hard to say. It's uh, I think we have also a bunch of angel investors and VCs in our platform, and uh, and they are doing. Um, so I, I don't think there's a problem. Uh, there's enough investors, but it's a question of the the, the scale of the platform and the loc- obviously your location as a business or as a whatever well, greater project. In the, for example, in the Hoyne, there the Estonian rewards based crowdfunding. Uh, this is usually used by the. Estonians in, or Estonian diaspora around the world, basically. The, so it's mostly used by the Estonian speakers. But uh, but I, on the equity side, it's I think it will be more uh, internationally distributed. So any further questions? Everything is clear. Okay, then uh, thanks and uh, happy crowdfunding. <laughs>